Today I want to talk about ISO speed for just a minute. ISO is a number that, uh, in a setting that escapes a lot of people a lot of the time. What do we use it for? Well, if you talk to an old-time photographer, they didn't really play with ISO very much at all because they were stuck on film. And on film, you bought the film and that was your ISO. You couldn't change it. On this old film camera, you used to pick this up and there's a number in a window here. Kind of hard to see. But you pick this up and you'd spin this to whatever ISO you bought, say 100. That's a common number. And the numbering system is still the same today as it was with film. ISO actually stands for the International Standards Organization. Uh, what happened was people started making film and we got different kinds of film, but we didn't know what to set our camera. How, how much light does this film need? Well, the International, International Standards Organization got together and they started making people rate their film and it's very nice. So the ISO number tells us how much light we need to expose the film. Okay, the bigger the number, the less light it needs to make an image. The downside is you get grain or noise the higher the number you go. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not as good. And that's one of the biggest things that have changed since digital photography came out is we can shoot at these insanely high ISO numbers these days and get really pretty nice images. I remember shooting film 400, man, we didn't dare go above 400. We hardly ever would. We'd shoot at 100 to 160 uh, film. We'd use the Kodak Portra uh, NC film mostly for our portraits. And that was it. You were stuck. You had to make your f-stop or your shutter speed adjustments based on whatever film you put in the camera. Today, we don't have to do these crazy things that we used to have to do. We can change our ISO between shots manually, or we can set our cameras to ISO auto. Every shot can be different. And we can even have the camera take control of that for us. So let's look at ISO 100. Generally speaking, you want to shoot at the lowest number ISO that you can. And what I mean by can is to get the shutter speed and the f-stop you want. So let's say, let me just flip into manual mode here. So if I'm at ISO 100, f7, well let me pick a little more. 3.5 is a very common maximum f-stop number. So if I want to shoot at ISO 100, a proper exposure is right about a fifteenth of a second. Okay, that's pretty slow. And we'll talk about f-stops and shutter speeds and their benefits later on, but a fifteenth of a second is basically too slow to handhold safely. What I really need to be at is a, a sixtieth. It's, depending on your technique, you may be able to get away with that. But you can see how dark, hopefully you can see how dark that image is on the screen. So, if I wanted to shoot it at those settings, I could just simply raise my ISO. So it looks like 400 is about right. But if I wanted to go faster, I could go up to ISO 800 or 1600. Now the downside of the ISO setting is the grain. So I'm going to run through right here and I'm going to set my mode to aperture priority and what that's going to do is change my aperture. So I'm going to start here at 100 and I'm just going to take a quick image of this little Titac. I'll lock down my focus and I'll just flip through 200, 400 and so on all the way up and then the next section will pull these up and see what the ISO effects. Okay, 3200. You can see my shutter speed gets faster every time I do this. 12,800. These numbers are insane, by the way. And ISO 16,000. So now we'll take these onto the computer, we'll pull these up in Lightroom, and we'll see the downsides of changing your ISO 
to these really high numbers. You can see I'm shooting at a two thousandth of a second at ISO 16,000. And this is just a couple of fluorescent lights. That's all we've got here. So really fast shutter speed. You could easily stop any motion at this kind of ISO, but there is a trade-off. Let's have a look at that.